Um, but yeah, guys, real quick, um, I want to show you a couple of tricks that are kind of like fun to kind of make sounds move a little bit more creatively than what you might kind of think for like a static sound. And in addition to that, I'm going to show some cool things to do LFO stuff with an Ableton using AutoPan. And then ultimately after that, show some cool uses of AutoPan LFOs with like reverb gates and a quick, quick thing. So if I can do this quickly, let's see. So a uh, first thing, this is actually um, some drums that are actually mouth sounds. These are not actual drum sounds. I did record these um, they're for a project that um, is something, but I pulled the drums out. So you guys can hear these drums by themselves and they're just like this. Just some pieces, there's the kick drums basically are actually like everything's mouth, so. And you might be wondering, what is this track right here? Like, why is this not doing anything? Now, what I wanna show you guys is, let's say we have a basic sound. For example, like I was gonna use Serum and use a pad, but Zoom doesn't wanna use Serum. So we're not gonna use that, but we have a basic just pad sound that's pretty static. So let's listen to it by itself. So kind of basic. And what I wanna do is the first thing you might learn when you're doing side chaining, I mean, side chaining is a way to kind of make sounds, kind of give space for other sounds to pop in or also make things move. And something that people usually know is the basic of side chaining the kick drum. So if I'm gonna side chain to the kick drum, let's uh, just play this by itself. Okay, and what I've done is I have a couple of racks or little compressors I put in, but all you're gonna do is you wanna drag a compressor in and let's say it's one of these, I called it the kick side chain. You're gonna press side chain and then you're gonna choose the kicks, and that's what the kicks are up here. So the kicks are basically the, the track that I'm gonna you know, get the sound from to do the side chain. And when that happens, we're gonna have this effect. Very subtle. So really, really subtle with the track, it's like this. Very, very simple, but I'm like, okay, what if I don't wanna follow the kicks into the track and I wanna make potentially another form for the, or another rhythm for these, um, the sound to follow. So what I figured out is a trick called ghost kicks. And basically what it is, is you take the kick drum, you make a new track that you're not gonna have active and you basically put a bunch of kicks. So this is, I mean, in certain rhythms, and this is the kick rhythm right now. And you're like, oh man, there's some clicks and stuff. And I like that because what I'm doing is now, instead of side chaining to the kick drum, I'm gonna turn this one on, which I pulled in and I'm side chaining to the ghost kicks. What that's gonna do now is it's gonna make the synth move in the rhythm of these ghost kick drums. So listen to this now. So it's not too crazy with the beat, it's kind of cool though, you'll see. So again, it's, it's, it's simple, but that's a way to kind of make something move with an auxiliary rhythm. And look, I even put it to the hi-hat just to test it. And this is stuff, guys, that you can apply to any sound. I'm showing you with the basic pad, but this can apply to bass. This can apply to any kind of vocal. You can make things move in a cool way by giving it that ghost side chain. And now like, let's say I did it to the hi-hat. So let's turn off, let's go back to this. Let's turn off this one and let's do the hi-hat. So what is the hi-hat pattern? This is the hi-hat pattern. And with the synth, it'll sound like this. Oh wait, I gotta choose side chain. And you can see it's following those little hi-hat patterns. And again, it's very simple, but you can pull the threshold down and get more movement from that. And then what you can do is combine the different pieces to get different effects. So I can combine the kick drum side chain with the ghost kick side chain, and you're gonna get this, so. And I, I apologize if there's some latency right now, it's just, or some glitching, it's the, the Zoom stuff. But yeah, that's one little thing that you can do with that. That's kind of fun. I've done it with tons of different sounds. And yeah, it's really, like I said, just taking a kick drum uh, making a new track, turning it off, but it's still active as the actual side chain and then making your own rhythms. And that can be a kick drum. You can use a percussion sound. You can use anything. I do recommend a more rhythmic sound because it has a quick attack and release. You don't want something that has too much of a big, long release and it'll sound really, really weird, but that's a trick. So that's a really, really quick thing. And um, now let's actually show you something neat. So let's say I want to move stuff without doing the side chaining and I'm going to do a cool trick with auto pan. So I always thought auto pan just did like the basic left, right of an auto pan or just kind of moving things around. So let's say I bring in a basic one with the sound again, static with auto pan. So it's kind of moving in and out in and out. And I'm like, that's cool. But then I had some homies, I'll actually uh, um, kind of give them a shout out on this for showing me. But basically what I did and what they showed me is you can turn this auto pan into an LFO. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you by, you know, this little example I've already done, but let's do it with you guys together here. So you're gonna take the, um, 
the, basically the rate at which it's going, and you're to convert that from hertz into notes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn the auto pan hertz into notes. The next thing I'm gonna do is you're gonna move the phase to 360, and you're gonna move the offset to 180. And then if you do that, oh, let's actually do 180. I got a auxiliary keyboard because my keyboard B is not working. Anyway, and what that's gonna do is once you turn this on, and by flipping that, you basically get an LFO. So this is in 16s. And then with the beat, just put it on. And you can also, and you can automate that. So what's fun is you can have it start off, let's say on the eighth notes, and then you can make it go 12s, go to 16s and watch it automate. That's a little bit dirty, but you want to make sure the cuts are clean and you can do all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of fun with that. And then if you want to shape it up, so it's not just like a curve, you can make it more of a square. So it's kind of cool. And, that, and again, this applies to all sounds. I'm just showing you with one sound. This applies to all sounds. And that's what's so fun with this kind of tool. And so what I'll do is I'll just call this LFO. And then you basically just save it. I mean, I already have it, but okay, I got another one. So yeah, so I basically have my LFOX and I save that as a tool that I can use within projects. And it's really cool because you can make crazy automations. You can have the amount fade in and out. So it kind of like goes back to normal. And that's kind of cool. And then you can draw that and you can record that and make that happen. So that's always fun. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to move over because I know we're, we got some quick time, but we're, we're actually going pretty good. So what's really fun is let's say I have this phrasing Wait, I gotta move the zoom so I can click Ableton. Yeah, so I have this phrasing, but I wanna chop it up using the auto pen and make it not so just like basic. And so I'm gonna throw in the bass here. So let's bring this bass part in, which is just like this. Again, this is a very basic beat, guys. I made it yesterday for this, so let's check it out. So very simple. Now that's just really not much happening there. So let's say I want it to all move. And what I can do is let's say I throw that LFO. I've made a grouping here of the 808s. I also have a Vox thing I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, but I have a grouping of the synth, the 808s, and a vocal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that auto pan, I'm going to put it on the group. And what that's going to do is it's going to move everything at once. So we have this effect. So, And something I'll get into in a second, I'm doing a cool thing with reverb. I'll show you. I'm making like a reverb gate that you can LFO, but I'll show you in a second. So by itself, it's this, right? But with the drums, it gets like this. So you can basically, very simple, but it's showing you how these things can move and what they were before that, I mean, with all this off, very kind of basic. So, but that's kind of a fun way to kind of give things life and really cutting things up. And you can, you know, you can do it on and off by cutting it, or you can actually just use the speaker on and off. I've seen people do that. If they have like a full phrase, they'll basically just like speaker on and off it. So it gives you the same effect. Wait, wait, that's the wrong thing to do. You want to invert that. Don't listen to me there. <laughs> So if I invert this, but then put the LFO and even have it extending out, it'll cut it. Yeah, and if you do it clean, obviously it works well, but that is a cool trick and just some small things that I wanna show you there.